Welcome to the Leaders Who Care, a podcast powered by Dynamis Group. We are here to give the stage and support to those committed to create a positive and lasting impact way beyond the profits and margins, the leaders of the world who care for others and serve a bigger purpose. Join us on the journey of creating a better, more caring world. And now to your host, Marian Tomalkov. Hello, everyone. I'm grateful to welcome uh, a great friend, uh, a leader who cares and an ally and a passionate uh, productivity and performance coach, Stoyan. Welcome and thank you for joining us uh, on pretty much the last few days of the year. Thank you so much, Marian. It's it's always a pleasure to have a conversation with you. And I'm very excited to actually have one of our conversations recorded because um, you know, we always go into these big visions and inspiration and, and plans. So I'm happy that we can actually share some of this positive energy at the end of 2020. No, absolutely. Look, it's uh, for, for those of you who don't know, um, I've known Stian for a number of years and it's uh, a great uh, leader in a way, but also he's... Uh, He's impressed me with number of qualities, but one of one of uh, of many is his really ability to connect with others, to create that positive uh, impact, and uh, make people feel themselves, make them feel you know uh, the way they are, and and creates that kind of um, nice environment, nice kind of feeling amongst other things. You know, you do inspire you do really help people to uh, be more productive um but soyan why don't you tell us your story you interview so many people and around the world and you i know deeply passionate to find the best productive tricks and and really what as far as it goes but why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about your journey and um what really uh, inspired you to do what you do today Thank you so much, Marian. Uh, it's been such an honor and a pleasure to to partner up on different projects, to to be a, a good friend of yours, and I really appreciate your kind words. Um, a little bit about my story. Well, I was born in the beautiful town called Sliven in Bulgaria. It's very uh, windy, I know. It is super windy, uh, so I'm not afraid of wind at the moment, and. Um, I was really interested in mathematics, but weirdly, I also have this artistic side, this creative side to me. So it's always been a duality. Should I go for mathematical kind of things or should I go for the art? Um, so in high school, I decided I'm going to study finance. Um, so I went for the mathematical approach and then I did my bachelor degree in Bulgaria in Varna. And then something happened, I went to a couple of those uh, work and travel programs in the United States mm. where you can you can stay for the summer, you can do some part-time job and, and you can travel and, and see the world. And I think this was the, the moment, the defining moment for me to, to decide I want to be a citizen of the world. I want to travel. I want to be somewhere, you know, uh, to leave my country at least for a while and, and to discover and explore. So I started searching for the next step and uh, obviously it was the pursuing my master degree. So I chose Denmark as a destination. And in my wow. head- <laughs> How did you choose Denmark? I mean, it's a, a very peculiar place and a great country in many ways, uh, but why Denmark? You know, people say things happen for a reason. And I really believe that um, I had a number of opportunities to, to study either in the UK, in, in the Netherlands, in Denmark. I picked those three countries. This was the shortlist. And uh, I was going through the different opportunities and options. And I decided the program in Denmark was the one that I really wanted the most at this moment. It was really specific finance degree, which was focused on empirical. And uh, the other reason was it was a two-year degree. And I was like, you know, I'm going to Denmark. I, I might as well stay for two years. You know, one year is not enough. <laughs> um, and that will give me an opportunity to really figure out what I want to do. And nice. at that time, I, I don't know about you because I know you also have a finance degree. But at that time, I was watching these Wall Street movies 
uh, Wall Street and uh, all these movies about uh, investors and yeah. Wall brokers. And I wanted to work on Wall Street. I was really excited to become a Wall Street banker. So my idea was I'll do my degree in Europe. And when I graduate, I just made some contacts in the US, at least that I told. So uh, so I can use those contacts, maybe find a job and, and become a, a guy on Wall Street. But little did I know what this what was about to happen afterwards. Uh, basically, I got really into movies. My all my time was movies. I would watch I, movies. I can tell from the Wall Street movies. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, because the, the other side of me that I mentioned is the creative side. I I would go and visit these amateur acting classes and and just uh, make these short films with my buddies just just for fun. But slowly, this this fun little passion turned into into a purpose. And I was really excited to pursue this as a career. And, and at some point when I had to write my master degree, my master thesis, I had to choose whether to write about behavioral finance. And, uh, and I decided, you know what? I'm going to write about the financial models behind the movie industry. So kind mm -hmm. of create a combination from both worlds. So long story short, I became a movie producer and an entrepreneur producing films and movies for, for the industry, uh, helping companies to tell their stories and, and to promote their products through beautiful storytelling. And, uh, and then at some point I realized, hey, I love making movies. I love this creative process of crafting a story and solving a problem for, for a customer. But at the end of the day, I ship the commercial, I ship the product video, and it's like, Okay, what's next? It wasn't really filled with meaning. The process was amazing. But the end thing, I, you know, I'll leave home and I'll be feeling a little bit empty. And, mm. and this bigger, bigger thing that uh, has been a huge passion of mine and something that actually connected us to some extent is to really, really help people and use our superpowers to, to be a trigger inspiration for people to take action in, in the direction that will help them, be it in their personal, be it in their professional life. Amazing. So for the past uh, five years, I've been, I've been doing a lot of different things, some of, uh, some of them with yourself, on the purpose, on the mission to, to support people on their journey to have a more productive and fulfilling life. Oh, awesome. Well, it, it also comes to a point where... Um, when you find a passion, when you find something that you really uh, like doing, uh, do more of it and take it to the next level. And this can become much more than just a, a hobby or, or a passion. It sounds like you, you know, from finance, you, you wanted to explore, but that kind of helped you to reach to, you know, your passion of what it is to with movie producing to start helping really uh, organizations, companies, individuals really show their story and inspire them and, and, and really find their kind of uh, vision and purpose. Yeah, and, and I have to say, uh, I would read those personal development books at the beginning and they'll say, you have to find your passion, you have to find your purpose. And there's a lot of great tools about it. And we can also explore some of these later in the conversation, but what I figure out for myself at least is you don't have to see yourself as this one thing. You know, here's Toyin, he studies finance, so he should be a finance guy. No, I'm, I'm a lot more than this. Everybody's a lot more than just one definition, one role. Maybe you study marketing, maybe you study <clears throat> role, but it doesn't define you as marketer or a lawyer. What if you see yourself as a package of all these skills, strengths, passions, networks, experiences, and just put them into one basket. And we had a lot of conversations with you, Maren, about this. You put them into one basket and say, how do I, how do I create value to the world by embracing all these things that I put into this basket? How do I make something that's unique for myself so I create value for the marketplace? Amazing. 
It's a multi, I call it multidisciplinary knowledge. In fact, uh, it's a collection of knowledge and, and I think it comes down to being really curious and, uh, you know, to explore and, and maybe if you want to give one advice to those up and coming leaders that are searching, that don't know what they want to do, that are in, in really um, having so many, ch so much choice and, and feel frustrated or feel like, hey, what I, what's next? I don't know what to do. My parents want me to become a doctor, but I, I don't want to be a doctor. I want to be something else, you know. Um, what would you say to them? What's your going through that journey? And, and you said that obviously you explored a number of things to, to get to where you are. But what, what is one advice you want to give yourself if you are, you know, 20, year, 20 years old today or, or, or even younger, you know, and you're starting out in your journey? It's a great question, Marian. Um, I would say take it easy relax don't make things feel too serious and you know every decision is the land the last decision and it's the end of the world no explore i think you mentioned a really good word curious be curious maybe now your intuition tells you you gotta go for this startup that you want to start or there is a marketing job because you really want to learn marketing or there's something else, you, you move to another country. Okay, we're in pandemic situation, but, but in general, what is the next step? No, don't, don't try to look for, oh my God, what if that's not my dream job? Well, maybe it's not, but taking this job will open the doors for new horizons. So I would say just, uh, just be bold, be courageous, and really try to listen to yourself as much as the pressure of the people around you, your friends, your parents, um, the society expectations. It's hard sometimes. You know, some people, as you mentioned, at that age, they live with their parents. Uh, together with you, we've done a lot of projects also with people in this uh, in this age, with Leader Academy, which is an amazing project. Those of the people who are listening, you got to check it out. Uh, Marian is a founder of uh, um, at Leader Academy, supporting people at that age to to find uh, what they're passionate about. It's an amazing project. But really, it's as far as much as it's a struggle because of the expectations, you really need to listen to yourself. And, and don't be afraid to, to make mistakes, and you will. I mean, all of us have done so many mistakes. You know, we also probably talk about that. But um, at the end of the day, who are you to judge whether this was a, a good or a bad decision? Right? I mean, two, three years down the road, you understand that some of the things that you perceived as mistakes are actually the biggest blessing. And they brought you into a direction you wouldn't have been otherwise. So just mm -hmm. take your chances, explore things, be curious, and you know, go all in. That's, that's my advice. I love what you said. Go all in. So uh, to really uh, summarize, guys, uh, really do try out things, test them. But when you do, just don't go 99% or 50% or 80%. Go all in. Go 100%. And if it's the right thing, it will very quickly shine. If it's not the right thing, it will also shine too. So you will know. If, but, but as Toyan said, it will be in a great opportunity to explore, to learn, and to even discover, to say, hey, uh, not, not, uh, discovering that that's not something you like is also a good thing. You know, at least you're, you know, someone said to me, um, discovering who you are, you start out with who you are not. <laughs> so uh, maybe that's a great part towards that journey, you know, to discover really who we are. And you don't know. You don't know unless you try. You can be thinking and saying, oh, this is not for me. Yeah, but you haven't tried. Now that you tried and you know this is not for me, it's off the, off the list. It's, it's so much better. And I have another, another kind of example for you as well. I, I know that when you try something and it does not work out or you it feels it's not the right thing, if you come back a few years later and try the same thing, but in a different settings, different environment, different people, it might actually be the right thing. So 
you know, just be aware that some don't, don't take it that if something doesn't work out, it doesn't mean it may not work out in the future as well. It depends on many factors uh, and in that sense. So, um, but uh, I think you wouldn't know unless you explore and, uh, and don't limit yourself. Definitely. And actually, when you mentioned that, uh, I recently listened to a podcast uh, where the the person who was running the podcast mentioned that the similar thing about books. You know, sometimes you grab the book. It just is not the right moment. You don't want to read it, but you come back two years later and it's like, wow, it's exactly what I need to read right now. So, uh, you know. I have a just because we have a great friend that is uh, uh, really making some great comments. I just want to show it to the audience because um, it is it is this is from Iskra. Thank you for this making this comment. Um, I said true. We grow through our mistakes, and the mistakes are the source of great learning. Better messy and actively growing learning than perfect and immobile. So remember, guys, um, don't wait or take too long to become perfectionist and that will paralyze you that will slow you down timing is precious don't wait for anything you would regret that you know just take a chance do it yeah i know you want to be perfect but you can't become perfect unless you try it out yeah thank you so much iskra an exceptional leader who cares as well <laughs> so great to to have you interact in the podcast so, Ian, um, what about now? I mean, look, you've done all this great and amazing journey. And uh, um, tell me about your current activities with productivity and startup wise guys. And you, you recently also um, just actually pretty much, I know you're about to launch your, your book and that taken you such a kind of a more than two years of actively searching and, you know, tell me about it really that you're passionate about productivity and what inspired you to create that place where so many great leaders can actually share their best practices and, and share with the world how to become more productive. I gotta say productivity is, is really my life. So I'm so excited and passionate about my, making my life more smart, you know, how do I maximize my experience here with life and with business by focusing consistently on the things that make me most productive and most happy? And how can I embrace this in cultures and organizations? So as you know, Mario and two of us, we, we always have these conversations and talk about the, the next productivity hacks, personal development, goal setting, all these things. I just love them. So it's been very easy for me to transition from the movie industry to, to become a productivity coach. Also because in the movie industry, you're always short on time, on money, on people. So you have to be smart about how to use the resources. Um, so somehow my entrepreneurial experience and my experience in the movie industry combined with my passion for personal growth and productivity, put it all together and and I started uh, working with people and working with startups, uh, helping them to, to really create these structures and frames. Mm -hmm. so, so having a clear picture, not just about, there's a lot of great experts in sales, in marketing, in, in, in product development. And these are really important things for, for companies. Where I come in and, and my partner and uh, co-author, uh, Cristobal Alonso, who's actually the CEO of Startup Wise Guys, um, where we come in with the perform methodology, it's it's more about the inner world. It's about the the personal leadership, the organizational mm -hmm. side. The uh, the book is called Perform: The Unsexy Truth About Startup Success. And really, most of the things that you're going to read in the book, I mean, you're going to see a lot of great examples. More than fifty examples from including one of yourself, which I'm really grateful about. More than 50 examples of uh, exceptional entrepreneurs like yourself. But a lot of the things you're going to see there, you'll see, hmm, I actually know that. Yeah, but do you do it? Do you have the habits? Do you consistently pay attention to the things that matter most? And if we look into the PERFORM methodology, 
perform is, is an abbreviation. Mm -hmm. It stands for purpose and values. P, purpose and values. E, effective planning. R, roles and responsibilities. F, focus and execution. O, optimal energy. R, robust communication. And M, mental toughness. If you master those seven, if you not just master them personally, but you create a culture where your team is consistently paying attention to those areas, you have a way bigger chance to actually succeed and create a better business. No, so I, love, I love it. You know, just that you explain that uh, uh, really how to do it and what every one of them start. I feel like if you master those skills, you can pretty much do anything in life, not just be successful in your business. <laughs> You know, I, I, I have to say this was a, this is the purpose of Startup Wise Guys, so I didn't come up with it, but um, Startup Wise Guys is, uh, is, a, is a brand, but it's more about a family for, for me as well and for the people who are connected to it. Um, it's, uh, I think it's the biggest B2B accelerator in, in, in Europe. And uh, their purpose is to, to help founders become entrepreneurs and build uh, international tech companies. So, so helping founders to become entrepreneurs or helping founders to become leaders, it's not only about thriving in your business, it's also about uh, becoming a better person, becoming a better friend, becoming a better husband. It's all connected. It's, it's really interesting. The first area, purpose and values, you know, Start with the why, starting with figuring out why do I want to do these things? And, and what, are the, what are the values that I want to have in my team? Do, do we all live these values? Is everybody clear about the, the philosophies, the principles, the way we do things? And if not, uh, what do we have to do? How do we attract people to the company that actually fit this culture? Yeah. But it's not, it's, it's not just about the business. What about your family? Absolutely. It's not sustainable if you don't cover some of those. And, and uh, this is so important. Um, you know, we have another comment here from, from Iskan saying, so, and I feel you should add happiness to the words and describe, you know, as a productivity and performance coach, you know, you, you carry and convey pure sense of happiness and profound employment of life. Uh, it's an essence. So which is contagious. So I'm sure everyone has been in touch with you, you know, will agree with that. And you, you really do come across as that, you know, of, of being and having that sense of, yeah, you know, uh, happiness coming across as positive. And, uh, you know, where does happiness fit into productivity? I don't think it plays a big role. Actually, in the, in the chapter of um, optimal energy, we have a energy framework, which is kind of also an abbreviation. And um, E states, stands for excitement in the energy framework. You know, energy is like uh, um, the second E actually stands for, for, for excitement. And within this, we talk about uh, joy and happiness and, and, and making things more fun. Uh, I, think, I think they are interconnected because if you only focused on productivity and producing results, at some point you lose the meaning. Yeah. Now what's, the, what's the point of achieving all these things if you don't have this sense of fulfillment at the end of the day? So, so yes, you can be extremely productive without being happy for, for a certain period of time. But if you don't have a plan which leads you to a life of productive and fulfilled life, right? Uh, then, then it's not sustainable. You, you're going to burn out at some point. Yeah, absolutely. And look, this is so important. And, and I can feel sometimes, you know, it can be also very productive and do great things. But, you know, if you don't have that sense of fulfillment with something, you better find it. You better, and, and no one can do it for you, but, but yourself. And, and uh, you know, what is your advice to, to those really who actually are in that position, that they're productive, they do a great thing, but uh, and, and they have great results but look something that may be missing you know how how do you personally take care of yourself how do you kind of because look 
people may not know, but uh, you know, and, and I know you also is a great friend, and we know that is we're not always at that kind of optimal high perform. We also have our down moments, you know, in that sense. And you know, what are your moments? You know, what do you do in those moments? Do you have the, but the the difference is, I guess, is we quickly recover. You know, in that sense, it's that is where the difference is, and and it's like, you know. So someone said to me about uh, the stress and, and, you know, if I can use my cup, you know, and it's like, if this is the old stress and if you can hold it for like uh, five minutes, it will be all right. Your, your hand won't hurt. But if you have to hold it for a few hours, you might actually get a little bit. What about if you hold it for a whole day? Then you might get you're know, really stressful. So I, I, I basically what I do is, and I started to think more of it, please put your stress on the table. And let it rest let your hands rest so you know uh, try to find a way that you can rest from the stress is is what i normally do but how do you what about you stoyan you know you seem to be very good at it and and i know you've seen you work in a lot of difficult times and circumstances but you still you know uh majority of the times find a way to keep that kind of positivity and and positive you know energy coming out you know, we were having uh, some jokes with uh, with our uh, partner from some medieval masterminds, uh, Andre Ilyev, a dear friend as well, uh, that uh, we thrive under crisis situations. Um, I personally, when there is a crisis, I, I, I'm I feeling in a good place <laughs> somehow. I, I think it, it might be strange, but when everything burns and we need to fix it, somehow my my mind is really focused on solving things. I don't know if it's natural. I just take a deep breath and I focus on solution. What, yeah. What's the next step? That's it. Which is the biggest fire to solve? There's many fires right now. Which one we need to focus on? We need to act fast. Um, so in terms of this situation of um, urgent crisis, I think my advice would be just to just to take a step back and to make it take a few deep breaths and and stop for a second really pause yourself and say okay i'm stressed i'm under this i'm in a really low place right now is that helping me to to get over the situation or do i have to change my mindset do i have to change the way i do things my focus what should I focus on? And so, so the, the thing is actually really, really good thing. Marian, I'm, I'm really excited to hear what you think about the, the tool that we are presenting in the chapter of mental toughness, which is called the mental state tool. Uh, because it really, for me, is uh, this, um, this tool that helps me to get over such situations for myself and for, for, for other people. Basically, to get aware where are you at the moment. Are you in a low frequency or are you in a really high frequency? Mm. And everybody goes down. We're human beings. You said it really well. Some people are better into jumping, jumping back faster. And you're one of these people. I'm really impressed by your ability to stay positive in, in the midst of a crisis. Um, but the first thing in awareness, and, and there's these seven levels of awareness that we can also discuss um, or people can go and check it out. But how do I get myself higher up? Because it's all here. Yeah. It's all here. Uh, yes, it might be the biggest problem. It might be something that seems unsolvable. But what is your probability to actually address this productively? If you're down, if you're feeling sorry for yourself, if you're feeling like a victim, as opposed to if you come calm, peaceful, determined and focused and look at the problem from a different perspective so you have a much bigger chance to actually make a difference even if you cannot solve uh, the whole problem so no oh, i love it and look this is uh, great of you you said one important thing and and i i, I really feel that is uh, fundamental to change the perspective of a difficult moment especially now and and um, it's one, one important thing is your focus, guys. Where, whatever you focus on, that's what grows. 
So if it's a problem, yeah, you can focus on the problem that will grow. But if you focus on the solution, that will grow better for you. You know, and you, you'll find a solution to the problem. And and so, you know, there's one important thing, and it's not easy to focus on that always because you, you constantly think of something. But there are ways. There are, that's why uh, habits are important, you know, to really be able to create that self-care. And, and when you notice something is really, you cannot get it off your mind because it's normal. You cannot just go and play happy when you have a problem, whether it's in your family or whether this is uh, your friends or something is not right. But maybe what you could do is do to everything that you think you can do to the best of your abilities and, and try to find a solution for that yourself. And if that doesn't work, uh, but the focus is already shifted. You're focusing on a solution. You're not focusing on, on al along the problem with, with that end. And if that doesn't work, what do you do? What's the next level of escalation? I actually, I just wanted to, to add on top of what you're saying, amazing things you're saying, is um, let's not make the, the wrong impression that, you know, every time you just focus on the solution, everything, you know, like sometimes you're just feeling... In maybe you've been working really a lot and you're exhausted physically and your mind is negative and sometimes the most productive thing you can do is just to stop and, and take a day off, take a half a day off and, and just do something that's really, really good for you. Go to a sauna, uh, you know, get yourself a really nice dinner. How can you take care of yourself? And I do that sometimes. I, I, you know, I work really hard now with the book. This year has been really, really interesting. Uh, working from home many hours. I'm an extreme extrovert. So um, there have been some moments that I just, I'm, I'm creatively exhausted. I can't do anything else and I have a deadline. But I know that, and I have to really push myself and say, hey, listen, you've been doing great. You know, uh, I have a gratitude journal. Yeah, that's, that's one too. <laughs> so when I feel I'm kind of down, actually I do it every day, but specifically when I feel down, I'm like, okay, let me write 10 things that I'm grateful about. And, and you start coming up with things. You know, I had a great conversation with Marian today. Amazing. Uh, I drank two liters of water. Uh, I'm healthy. I live in a free country. I, I did this amazing thing and helped this person. So, so I just write all the things. I'm like, wow, you know, it's not a bad day. It's actually a really good day. <laughs> so gratitude journal, very good, especially for those of you who are entrepreneurs and get stuck into this wild problem that doesn't, you know, you can't solve at the moment. Um, another amazing tool, we call it worry clearing tool. What? Uh, worry clearing. So okay. It your worries. That's um, cool. <laughs> so basically, and. Actually, this is something I intuitively started doing, but then I started teaching it to people and people, people started using it. I'm like, okay, that's, that's actually something very practical. So basically, you imagine you, Marian, you, you're in your bed, you want to fall asleep, but there's these three problems that were un unresolved and you can't fall asleep. You're just bothered. You're concerned. Yeah. And you keep on overthinking and thinking you can't fall asleep. So... Or maybe during the day, there is a problem. You're kind of a little stressed and, and it's all in your head. What uh, you can do is you take one of these, a notebook, you take a pen, and you just you, you make two columns. On the one side, you write, what are the things that I worry about that I have some kind of control over? Mm -hmm. And on the other side, what are the things that I worry about that I cannot control? Just get it out of your head, put it down on paper. So only with this, you already feel better. I promise you. But then, then try to give it a little bit. What I do personally is I've, I measure the impact. I love to measure things. So I would say, okay, how, much, how big is the impact of this thing from 1 to 10 personally for me? This is a 7. This is a 3. This is a 10. Ooh, this is a 10. That's a big one. But actually, I have a control over it. Hmm, okay. What can I do to solve it? Let me just brainstorm. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I have no idea at the moment. Okay. Is there anybody who can help me? Ah, Marian can give me a good advice. Georgie can give me a good advice. Okay, good. Nice. 
these are the things that are, these are the action steps that I can take tomorrow when I'm in a good place. Good. The things I can control, I have some ideas how to solve them. What about the things I cannot control? Well, first of all, I cannot control them. So why bother? <clears throat> you know, there are certain things. There's a global pandemic. Uh, I cannot control the fact that there's a global pandemic. You know, maybe I have a little impact I can make, but that's it. That's a given. I don't like it, but that's it. So how can I find a better perspective? How can I see the, the opportunity in, in, in these things? That really bothers me. Okay, what, what's good about it? What can I learn from it? What, what is the blessing in this? What is an opportunity? How can I help somebody that's, that's you know, really struggling right now? And I think especially in a year like 2020, and Marian, you've been such an exception. I want to give you praise, you know, calling me and all the other people in your network and just, just asking, hey, Stoyan, how are you doing? How can I support you? You have no idea how much it means. How much it means to really care for people. Just a phone call. Um, so, but really, this this worry clearing tool is um, hopefully those of you who are watching, um, uh, you know, you, you can give it a try if you're if you're feeling under pressure, um, and of course, ask for seek professional help. You know, sometimes you might have to go to to somebody who's qualified to help you out with uh, if the stress is 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 really a lot. If you know, some certain people go through medical conditions like depression and so on. So, so there's professionals out there that you can reach out to and, and, and they can help you. Um, but at least start with your friends. I think when, when we're feeling down sometimes, we don't want to call our friends. Mm. They go feel like, I don't want to bother them. I'm in such a low place. I don't want to be seen like this. So we don't make a phone call and we wait to be better when we call them. Yeah. And I think if we can inspire people to, you know, also here, curious to hear what you think, Marian, but if we can inspire people to be better into seeking help, I think that's a great way to, to care. Amazing. Well, I love what you said. And, and look, this tool, uh, you know, it makes so, it's just so, I believe it's, I believe in it. I mean, I've tried it and I know what you mean. And first of all, when you have a, a war, you can't go you can't fall asleep if you have a worry on the back of your mind and um easily at least you you'll and you will not have a good sleep most likely so the putting it down on paper it, it this whole process of writing it takes it out of the head often that's alone but also having the category like on the left side or right side what i have control what i don't have control what, what and prioritizing what is the most uh, the, the biggest one that affects me that I can control. So basically you can take an action with, with a, that taking an action is always helped me. Whenever I had a situation or, or very difficult problem, taking the action really right in, instantly in that moment makes a big difference because it shifts your focus and perspective. And also when you finish that process, when you put it down, you can go back to your bed and you know you have a plan for tomorrow. That's what makes the difference, having a plan. So, guys, have a plan and just follow that system that students shared. It's, it's amazing. And, and, of course, find, there are many other tools that you can also look at. But, you know, that's amazing what you just shared because uh, – and, of course, if, that, if something doesn't work, you know, with yourself, it's always better to have tried it, everything you can because – if you can't solve a mathematical equation or, or a task and um, um, you go to your math teacher and say, oh, by the way, I don't know how to solve this. He might actually look at you and say, hmm, okay. Or if you go and say, hey, I actually tried everything I can and I've solved half of it, but I, I, can't, I can't figure out something here. The, you know, the difference is huge because he'll see that you've tried it yourself and you're almost there in some ways it may be some little tweak so always attempt to do it yourself but once that's not working you know go and talk to as many people as possible and my advice and strategy you know to you guys is 
seek and ask people apart from your friends, but people that are experts in that field or that or have gone through that problem. There's no point of asking someone that hasn't gone through it or hasn't done it. Um, you could ask it if it's a close friend, of course, but if it's someone that really is um, gone through and, and really been through this could give you a lot of insights. So uh, um, talk to as many people as possible, but also be selective of who actually has done what you want to do. Seek advice from those who walked the path. I Amazing. love that. Amazing. Look, Stoyan, I mean, it, it, this has been so great uh, to share all these insights and uh, uh, about the focus and, you know, how to really... What about now, Stoyan? You know, in this moment in time, it's the year end. You know, maybe it's time to do some self-reflection on, on yourself and, hey, how did the year go and uh, how people should do self-reflection, in fact, and, and how should they plan for the new year? That's an excellent question, Marion, especially in a year like 2020. Uh, that's been so unpredictable for, for many of us. Um, so what I usually do, and of course, you can take some of the things, you can leave some, some of them, but as a structure, uh, my yearly reflection is, is usually with two big steps. So the first step is, is the reflection part, and the second part is the, the goal setting or setting the, the targets for the next year. So the reflection part, make yourself a hot uh, cup of chocolate, you know, a cup of hot chocolate and, and, or tea, something cozy, get some candles if you want. You can be with some friends if you do this. Uh, or champagne or a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever yes. you fancy, yeah. <laughs> and I love you said champagne because the first part is actually to appreciate uh, and celebrate the achievements. You know, if you, if you, if you try to think about the whole year, and, and last year we did a, a great workshop with some different masterminds. In um, we ask people to try to think what are the top three things from each month. And people started looking at their phones and like you know just what what did I achieve every month? And and then you realize wow it's been such a great year you know so many great things happen I just I just didn't notice them. So the first part is really to celebrate the achievements to know them, to write them down. And I personally, I picked top three. What are the top three achievements from 2020? And then you kind of write them down. Um, a great question to ask yourself, what made me happiest? What, what are the experiences, the adventures, the, the, the trips, the people that made me happiest? When was it that I felt happiest? And it doesn't have to be like one answer. It could be, you can journal. It could be like a text, you know, but but just try to really go through the whole year and think about what, what may give you the most joy and happiness. Yeah. So, so that's, and, and you can, another really good question, by the way, for the reflection is, what are the 20% of the people that gave me 80% of the positive emotions? And the opposite. What are the 20% of people that created 80% of the negative emotions? <laughs> so it's accounting, right? You're counting the year. Um, and, and you just start thinking about it. Okay, what, what did I learn this year? Another good question. What were the most important learnings? If I see myself right now, did I learn any skills? Did I learn any mindsets? What did I learn? Oh, this is amazing. I learned to play guitar. I learned uh, this language. I... I learned to be a better leader. What are the main leader learnings? And then, uh, so these are just some of the questions. I'm sure you can come up with more questions, but just really reflecting on what were those most meaningful experiences and moments from the year. That would be the first step. And really take your time. Don't, don't do that in a working day. Maybe just spend half a day, have a peace of mind when you're doing these things. And then the second step is about setting the intention for, for the next year based on those reflections, based on the learnings and the patterns you see in these reflections, you can start setting the intention for next year. And when I say intention, it, I'm actually borrowing this word from uh, one of my first speaking mentors, Janet Atut, uh, an exceptional speaker and the creator of the passion test. Uh, so she 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 told me a lot of great things about about this, but 
the formula of the passion test, Marian, is intention, attention, no tension. Wow. Intention, intention. What attention. do I intend to create? The first step is intention, right? I need to set the goals. I need to figure out what's my passions. What do I intend to create? Where do I want to be? What's the, like creating, starting with the end in mind, where do I want to be? If the year is over, like what, what are all those skills I want to learn, the goals I want to achieve? Let's set the intention. Let's create clarity. The second part is attention. And this comes when the year starts, right? Attention. I need to, I need to be focused. I need to put the energy and we need to take action in this direction. How do I create the plan? So the attention is there. So I make sure that I really have the attention on the core priorities. And then the third part, which is something that I had to learn and I'm still learning, is no tension. You set no. the intention, you put the attention, but you, you have to you have to learn to let go. Yeah. And and I know that's not an easy one because you know I, I personally speak where sometimes you try to control things and it's not easy to let let them go. You, it's not and I, and I learned starting to really see towards the end of this year after so many experiences that um, by holding on to something um, that is dear that you start to be afraid uh, actually it it actually doesn't help you know by letting it go and say hey if it's something that is you know to be part of my life or to be with me or associated with me uh, it will come regardless whether you need to hold it or not in that sense because if you try to hold it it actually may not stay that long because you you're kind of restricting it but actually if you don't you don't have you know if and if it goes away then it's not the right thing it's not meant to be that's so simple as that and and it's not easy because you know sometimes it could be a, a close person it could be um an event or something that you you you're trying to predict and um you're right we're all learning on this but that if you don't if you resist something that's what personally i felt uh brings me down as uh, energy you know resisting some events but in fact when the when i start not to resist and start to think of wow this is meant to happen so what am i learning from this what is the best that's that's lesson is probably the best thing that's happening to me because what you get is not what you want, but what you deserve. So you, you must have got this because you deserve it. And, and, and this, is, this is really letting go uh, process is, is really, um, I think, we're able to do that and master at a very high level. But it's... Especially when you're ambitious. If, if, if you don't have any goals and any ambitions, I think it's much easier to, to let it go. But if you have high ambitions, if you want to achieve things, if you want to grow businesses, it's it's kind of easier to get into this more logical, rational mind and and be more attached to the outcomes. Mm. And I think it's a mastery. It's a, it's an art to have clear intentions and goals. But if they don't happen, to be able to let go and and regroup quickly, as you said, and get back on track and say, hey, that's the best. That's the best I. I could do, I, I gave it my best. I didn't achieve my goal. How can I get better? So it's, but it's, it's an art. It's definitely an art. But just to finish the, the, the part with the, with the goal setting, I highly recommend the passion test. We do it quite often, Marian, with you as well. Um, the passion test is amazing too. You can go check it out by Janet Atut. Uh, it's a very simple tool way. It, it, it helps you to figure out what are the five things at this very moment, that matter most to me, that make me most happy. And it's really cool because it's more hard driven. It's not logical. It's more, you know, you let aside all the judgment and, and really try to connect with what makes you happy. Um, and I, I do this every six months, the passion test for myself, because they change with time. Uh, and based on the reflections, based on the passions, now I have good enough data to actually set goals that are reflecting all these things 
so, so that, that's really really good and then you can you know there's many ways to set goals and and so on but and i don't know if marian if you've seen this uh, this study but there was a study that they did back uh, 20 or 30 years ago um and they were tracking the people afterwards they asked people to set goals and some people had them written down some people didn't write them down the people who wrote them down not only after 20 or 30 years they were happier but their financial wealth their level of happiness achievement everything was much higher when you only write your goals and the percentage actually goes higher up if you have somebody uh, to keep you accountable accountability partner so just guys pay attention to this this is real write down your goals and ideally have somebody that will frequently enough be there to tell you hey Stoyan, um you need to step up your game man you set up this goal absolutely get an accountability you know a, a buddy that can actually hold you accountable for and that could be even your child you know is the they're the best accountability you know they will never forget <laughs> what you told them so i think i highly recommend look this is this is what i mean we are on on a podcast of the leaders who care and uh for those of you who don't know you this is how you care you know i mean you by giving so much by sharing your knowledge expertise it's it's what uh, i'm grateful for and and obviously to have you as a great ally and a friend and also as someone who greatly believed you know to establish this platform you know the leaders who care so i want to thank you you know personally for believing for being part of this great uh, mission and uh, for being co-creator of this in in many ways and um and look, uh, of course, I'd like to invite you from time to time also to, you know, uh, to to lead some of those shows yourself and and appear as you know as you've been a, a greatly great support along this journey. So sincerely, thank you, Stoyan. Marian, thank you so much for being the driving horse uh, and you know the biggest believer in this platform. It's just the beginning, and we had a great discussion yesterday that it's together when we can reach far. It might sound like a cliche, but it's so true. When we unite, when we come together, when we bring leaders who are purpose-driven, who really want to make a positive impact and and create a space where we can interact, we can support each other, and we can come up with much better ideas than if we try to do it on our own. So I'm really grateful to be part of this journey, and this is just the beginning Super excited about what's to come with the leaders who care. Thank you for being such a such a caring leader. Thank you, Stoyan. And uh, this is one advice I want to share, guys. F- find really leaders and, and people that you enjoy being with and creating amazing things. This is what unlocks what I call the Voltron. You can do so much by yourself and you can probably achieve a lot of great things. But having great, really, allies, great friends along the journey makes it a lot more pleasant and unlocks even a bigger force a bigger impact and that's that is the secret and uh in that so that's a great advice but make sure that you know you you choose carefully the people around you that's gonna make that's gonna make a a profound difference to the people to the your well-being and as you said follow stan's advice of, of those 80 20 rule um, you know, just as you were speaking and sharing all this, Toyan uh, Iskra just shared. I just found a piece of paper with all with the goals I had set in 2008, and uh, I had achieved them all. So that shows really that if you write them down, really they will materialize if you really truly believe. And uh, um, it's it's amazing to to kind of have this power. One of the final things, Diana, because we can talk for hours and we'll enjoy it. And uh, um, what excites you at this moment in time? What are the things that, you know, you talk about a passion test, about other things. What about now? And, and you, you know, if we talk about a better, how to create a more caring world, you know, later on. But what about your excitement today, personally? What gives you energy and motivation? A couple of things, Marian, come to mind. When Corona happened, the pandemic happened, 
And just like you, I started reaching out to people and, you know, hey, I'm here for you. Do you need any help? And an entrepreneur from, from India wrote me back and he was like, Stoyan, I don't thank you so much, but I don't need any support. I just want to share with you that several months ago, you did this boot camp that I was a part of in, in Armenia. And now several months later, we are making, and I think it was, uh, we are making 200,000 US dollars per month because you helped us to, to really focus on one thing. Pri prior to that, we were focusing on, on several different projects and we, you really pushed us to start focusing and now we make this money, we're making an impact with all these farmers in, in India and I really wanna thank you. So I don't need anything, I just wanna thank you. And, and receiving those messages, Marian, especially when you don't expect it, when, I don't know, I did this bootcamp like a couple of years ago, but just the feeling that you're part of the journey of somebody to, to help them, be it with growing their business, be it just for finding a partner, uh, you know, making friends, I don't know, something that creates a positive impact that means something to them. That's something that really excites me and, and I'm, that's why I'm also really grateful being uh, part of this platform and, and other platforms. So being the trigger for, for others to somehow to accelerate their own happiness and success, that's the one thing. And the other thing that's connected is bringing people together, bringing leaders together, something that you're exceptionally good at yourself, but it just makes me happy when I can connect to people that can generate value in between each other or more. Uh, so any opportunity that we can, we can create this, uh, this mastermind groups, this, uh, um, you know, support systems for, for people and for leaders to, to really generate freedom for them so they can, they can make a bigger impact. That's, that's what excites me these days. And I think that's what also um, is, in a way, a driving force for creating this care culture. Because when, when people are free, when people are happy, they just want to give. Nice. So, yeah, that's amazing. Uh, wow. You know, thank you. And look, uh, it, it is great what you just shared, you know, giving that energy, giving, getting really, you know, it, it looks like actually there was, we had a just before you, a great leader and CEO, Bracken. The RLC of Logitech says yeah, something very interesting that actually taking care of others in a way helps you a lot to yourself um, with your longevity of life, with your quality of life in every aspect. So I actually, actually believe that, you know, being able to sincerely take care, that is the key. Try, you know, try to do something that you don't want to do, but find a place where you are full and you're able to share and take care of others is, uh, uh, is going to serve you well, being able to serve others, people to the left of you, to the right of you, people, friends. It doesn't have to be like hundreds of thousands of people. It can be just the people around you in, in that sense. And um, look, what is your vision for, you know, uh, the better, a better world in the short term, mid term, long term? I'm very optimistic about 2021. Uh, I do believe maybe the next six months will be very uncertain, but slowly things will will get into a, a lot more positive place, so to say. Um, and I think what I really want to encourage people is to to take personal ownership. We we can we can only get into a better place if we individually take ownership and, and apply this leadership and care, as you just said, what is the small difference you can make? You know, don't, don't fix the global warning. You probably cannot do that, but but how can you make a small difference? Maybe be, be strong and go and help your friends. Maybe volunteer and, and help those people in need. These are the times that you can really prove yourself as a leader. Uh, so I think if, if we use this 
uncertain and crisis situation globally as an opportunity to become better leaders, to, to strengthen them up, to focus on better values and embed them into, into the way we do things, into as societies, as businesses, then there's a really, really bright future in front of us. And um, yesterday we had a little bit of a discussion with you, Marin, about the acceleration of technology, which is, which is super, super exciting. You know, thanks to this global pandemic, we were forced as a society to actually build solutions that would otherwise take us maybe years. But now we kind of build them for you know, such a faster period. And, and this is exciting. There's so much uh, good that's coming. Uh, uh, there's still many people are struggling today. We need to be compassionate. Uh, you know, people are having difficulties the closed ones might be affected by the virus or, or their businesses. So just, just hold on, guys. These two show pass um, and try to be compassionate. I'm really, really positive that better times are coming in front of us. Absolutely believe and thank you for that encouragement. You know, I just uh, wanted to uh, share some final words and, and some takeaways from this uh, kind of uh, amazing, really uh, um, kind of uh, podcast today and um, uh, one of the takeaways I have from a, a listener you know she's kind of takeaway say love to hear about focus truly a game changer or, or is there any any things you want to highlight from from this really uh, great interview today Stoyan? any final words first of all Yeva uh, thank you for joining uh, she's such a leader uh, so thanks for tuning in and engaging with us Final words, I just uh, I want to summarize what we were discussing, Maria, the whole time. It's all about mindset. It's all about controlling your state. Yes, there are difficult times for many, uh, but your ability to control your state and to raise higher up in a higher state of consciousness will give you an advantage to deal and address the challenges from a better place. So, and, and you, you shared something really amazing and a great reminder that it's about giving. When you start giving and caring and supporting others, it comes back to you. The best way to, to raise your awareness, help somebody else. You're feeling down, help somebody. Immediately you, you feel this, these feelings and you, you raise up to a better place. So... Uh, maybe that's that's what I want to encourage people. You know, just uh, keep your sanity, uh, stay healthy, stay safe, but but at the same time, focus on opportunities, control your focus, try to really focus on the the learnings, the blessings, the the opportunities, and how can we support others? Amazing. Look. Thank you once again for being part of this, and um, what a great. Uh, number of great advices to him keep well and uh you know i'd love to hear how we can support you to do more of this of what you're doing because it certainly makes a profound difference sincerely thank you thank you so much marin you're such an excellent host a caring leader and i'm excited for what's to come i look forward to to uh, 2021 <laughs> great guys as you as Toyan said and you know Take care. Stay well. A lot of great goodness is coming. Just we need to wear out these difficult times and um, find a way with different tools to to help yourself and, and the closest of you um, until after storm there's a rainbow and, and a great weather is coming. So we know that's, that's on the way. Where would you? God bless. God bless. Thank you.